OK, we are now recording. And. Now the floor is yours. Oh, is it me? Yep. Okay. Yep. Awesome. Now it's you. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Nicole. Yep. Uh, no problem. Good afternoon, everyone. Again, uh, my name is Amish Tari. I'm the tech. I'm the event supervisor for the Crash Car Expert, and I have been running this event about six years now. Uh, some of you may know. Uh, again, just with a quick raise of hands, right? Uh, can you just give me a little bit of understanding of how many of you have participated in the events or even have uh, seen the events? So there is a raise hands if you can. Uh, there, there is a feature at the top of your screen. There you go. But it's a little hand. Just select it. Yep. And just so OK, so I can I see a couple of raise hands there. So I think a lot of folks are new here. Uh, perfect. Thank you very much uh, for that uh, quick uh, piece there. So what I'm going to do here is quickly go over some of the rules, right? And uh, also, since we have a smaller crowd here, I think I'll be able to take some questions and uh, things that uh, you know you may have. Uh, if it's your first time uh, doing this event, uh, it's a fun event. Kids always love this event. They're always waiting. Uh, they always have fun in this event. So quick uh, sharing my screen here. Uh, quick website. Uh, if you if you're not aware, I'm pretty sure everybody is. But if you're not, you can go on the Macomb Science Olympiad website and look at the event. Uh, all the details are in here. Uh, there are a couple of videos. I would highly encourage you to look at these videos. Uh, there are a lot of uh, Q and A's that are already built into the uh, into the site, so you can definitely look at the FAQs. There are you know, quite a few of them. Uh, and if you still have questions or anything you need to ask, feel free, uh, send send it uh, to the Macomb SO, uh, you know, through the website, and we'll be happy to answer any of your questions or uh, concerns you may have. Uh, again, from the material perspective, you can purchase material right from the Macomb Science Olympiad website. And, uh, you know, you can get a kit uh, that's I think, you know, it's good for like 20 runs or 20 practice runs uh, if you want to. Uh, you can always get more if you if you wish to. Uh, and here is you know information on the kits. You can go right on the website and order it uh, right from here. Uh, with that, let's just review quickly, go through some of the uh, rule set here. Uh, one to two students per team. Uh, approximately, sorry about that. Approximately 20 minutes uh, to build the ramp, and about uh, you know it, it. What I've seen generally, it does not take 20 minutes, right? So, but you you have your full 20 minutes. If you take full 20 minutes to build it, you know you can take that full time. Uh, obviously, uh, it's one of the tiebreakers, so you may want to when you practice, you may want to make sure you practice in the you know, in a little bit lesser time and not take the full 20 minutes. Uh, and we have seen, to be very honest, last few years, uh, the team has been building this in less than a minute, minute and a half, right? And they have been, uh, uh, you know, winning the in, in top five places. So uh, it's a, a little challenging, but uh, again, that's a practice that needs to happen. Uh, you know, all the construction materials, uh, is located here. It will tell you exactly what it is. You can go purchase these uh, pine cars directly, and it's part of the kit also. Uh, so that way, you don't have to, you know, try making these uh, pine cars here. Uh, all the materials here that's listed are all the materials that's going to be provided in the uh, practice kits, and uh, and the quantity also, right? So you'll have enough for like I think I believe 20 uh, practice rounds. Um, one of the key thing here from a rules perspective is up to three items of this list uh, from the listed, you know, up here will be removed during your event, right? So uh, it will not be known before uh, the kits will be handed over, and at that point they will 
I'll make an announcement as to what are the three things that are removed, or not only three things, it could be three things with less quantity, right? So I could be, you know, I could have four cotton balls, uh, instead of four, I can have two cotton balls and two toothpicks and one balloon as a part of that uh, kit that is being given to you to build. So you do, you, you do have to uh, practice with everything just because uh, uh, during the event, Right, there will be things that will be removed from the uh, from the final event. There, uh, you will be provided with the eggs. Right, it's the large grade A eggs. Now, there are quite a time question comes up: is Hey, uh, where do you get eggs from? Uh, we don't know. Right, we may go to Costco, we may go to Meyer, we may go to Kroger, wherever. Right, uh, but it's going to be large grade A uh, eggs that's going to be provided. Uh, again, uh, each team will have 20 minutes, as I said earlier, to build. Uh, at a at at point when we are giving eggs out, you will be and get an option to take one or two eggs. If you take one, it's a driver egg. The second egg is the passenger egg. Uh, you don't have to take the second egg if you don't if your structure doesn't support it. But driver egg is is. Uh, is mandatory here. You may only be able to bring in two pairs of scissors, ruler, pencils, uh, pliers. You know, we always have this struggle on the pencils, so make sure uh, team, your team has pencils so that way they can uh, write down the team number and other pieces. No other tools or materials are allowed during the event. Uh, so, the structure must be built in the way that allows, you know, the, to test your egg without breaking your egg. So if you see the video, uh, probably you you probably have already seen it. But at a point when you run the ramp and you, uh, you know, uh, take your cart and run the ramp with one egg or two egg, the key is the egg should not be broken uh, and leaking. So one of the big rule is that eggs can be cracked, but as far as it's not broken, it's still alive. Uh, you know, the other key piece here that I wanted to bring up is no part of the structure should come in contact with the wheels. So, you know, a lot of times, uh, you know, you have your, you know, if I give you, you know, uh, let's say a balloon or, or a, you know, a thread or something, right? And then you're tying it, Nothing should be coming and contacting the the structure, right? Because it does slow down the car. So uh, if if that's the case, we do it's it is a violation, and we will have the team go back and basically uh, redo the you know not redo but kind of fix the problem, right? So in past quite a few times we have seen where the strings are hanging because they just forgot to, to cut the string, right? At that point, yes, you do get a two minutes violation. You'll go back, just cut the string. So in a while, to avoid that two minutes, right? Uh, make sure the students are are making sure there is nothing that's touching the the uh, structure by itself. Uh, okay, uh, so you know, just uh, from the competition perspective, uh, what happens is you know. Again, I don't know what the practice round if you're going to have, but you know, final it's practice and we run the same way. So if you we have practice, you will get practice rounds, which will be exactly the same as the uh, one you run in the final event in May. Uh, so you will get everything. You don't have to bring anything uh, except the tool sets that we provided you or told you to about pliers or scissors and uh, pencils and stuff like that. And along with that, once you have that, you can come and uh, just you know, we'll, we'll guide you where to sit with your team, and we'll give you the whole kit. Uh, and all the teams will start at the same time. And once they build the ramp, uh, at a later point they'll come and run the structure they have built on on a ramp. Uh, now, uh, you know, once they run, they have three ramps at a different angles, so all three ramps can be at a different angle. So. Uh, I think it goes up to 60 degrees at the most, right? So uh, from a practice perspective, I would highly encourage you 
So if you want to make sure your all three ramps uh, are successful, uh, make sure you have practiced up to 60 degrees, uh, which which generally is what I'm going to put it in on the third ramp. Uh, the first two, and again, the ramp uh, angles will not be known until we uh, just start the uh, event for running, right? Not building. After the build, everybody completes the build, and then we'll start the run of the event. At that point, we will post the angles, and and you know, and the kids will go uh, ramp after ramp. If it survives, they go to the next ramp. Now, the key part of survival, like I mentioned earlier, is uh, you know, not being not leaking the egg. It can be cracked, but it should not be leaking. Uh, you know, some I've we've seen so many times where the egg you know drops, but it's not leaking. It's it's a uh, uh, you know it's just a crack. Uh, one of the other big rules that I wanted to mention here was, uh, you know, the egg has to come out as a free fall, which I will tell you uh, to look into this video. Uh, which is on the YouTube. I would highly encourage you. It's part of the uh, on the Macomb Science Olympiad website, also part of the YouTube, and which actually tells you how to take the eggs out, right? So the egg has to come free fall. You just you know can't take the structure, take the egg out. No, that's not going to be allowed. So it has to be a free fall. Uh, in, in which scenario, what I even experienced there is, uh, you know. Kids try to take it out and it just drops down, right? So you always say, hey, have something, you know, you have two people. So one is taking the egg out, other one is holding something like a shirt or something in the bottom, to making sure it does not fall and does not drop off the ground or on the table or, you know, it cracks the egg. So uh, the key thing there is, uh, again, once the egg is broken at any point, uh, you will not be able to run. So even before the event, when we give you the egg, egg is your responsibility. You keep the egg secure as much as you, you know, as where, wherever you want with the structure. You can't take the eggs out, or it has to live with the structure that you build it. Uh, so basically, make sure your eggs are uh, very secure because if it breaks, we don't replace eggs at that point. Uh, we have seen so many times kids getting disappointed because. Uh, you know, they try to move egg from here to here and just got dropped, right? Or, or you know, uh, so make sure your egg is secure. We don't replace the eggs. Uh, again, this, you know, uh, from a scoring perspective, points are awarded after each run. The key point is, depending on the, you know, earlier I said you have option for two eggs, driver egg and a passenger egg, right? So your driver eggs, uh, is mandatory passenger egg is optional. Your your driver egg does not have a negative points. Your passenger egg does have a negative point when you bleed, when it breaks or cracks or leaks. So at a point when you think of it, if you run ramp one, right, and you did fine here, but you know you did break out here because you were using two eggs, your score will be technically zero, right? So again, uh, you know. You don't have to use a second egg at any point. So let's say you run ramp one, ramp two with one egg, two eggs. So you got all the points that are in positive here, right? But then in the third ramp, you may say, you know what? My structure is pretty bad for my passenger egg to run. I do not want to take that risk and let me not run the passenger egg on the final round, which means if you succeed with all three ramps, you will be able to get this point, this point, this point, all the points here except this. But the risk is if you knew it, you may get a negative, right? So again, that's a fine balance where the kids have to make decision sometimes at a point, right? Uh, that, hey, do when do they stop running the third egg or can they run all, oh, sorry, second egg, or they can run all three ramps with two eggs. Uh, the other piece that I would highly, you know, I, I mean, you know, I kind of even say during the event is uh, making sure, right, this is going to be, you know, the the students event, right? The, you know, so if you come to the event, uh, you know, you as the coaches, parents will not be able to assist the students while the event is going in any scenario, right? So. 
I will be you know, explicitly saying that because it can be a disqualification. We don't want other kids getting distracted. So parents, coaches will stay behind the line. They can watch the event, but at a point they will not be able to uh, guide students that don't do this or do that or use this or use that or to, it's 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 an event for the kids. They will enjoy it, they'll build it and they'll be successful there. Uh, pretty much covers the you know rules. There are quite a few rule sets here. Uh, like I just mentioned, uh, feel free read over. There are a lot of other videos here, which is pretty pretty uh, cool to watch. I would highly encourage you to watch those videos. There are a couple of them from last few years. Uh, which actually describes and shows you how the ramps up for the folks that have not seen before. It's very important you you see it now. I will also I also know a lot of schools already have a have the structure for that have the ramp built right for some uh, for previous years. So I would highly encourage if you're a new coach, uh, talk to your school head coach from this year, last year, see if you can get the practice ramp so you can you know leverage or uh, you, you can have your kids. Uh, practice on the practice run. Uh, with that, I do, you know, I do wanted to show you this video here. Uh, you know, well, I want to show this one before I do this. So give me one more second here. I don't know if I did the right thing, but let me go ahead and share it out quickly. So if you see something that you have a question on while you're watching the video, uh, Feel free to ask the question. Most of the questions about the crash car event have to do with the phrase in the rules about students removing the egg by inverting the car. We get questions like, can it be rotated sideways? Can it be flipped backwards? Can it be shaken? Don't overthink this. It's really very simple. The objective is to keep the team from building a structure where the egg is nestled in a cocoon that has to be opened to remove the egg. Before your team makes their first drop, they place their car on a short section of ramp to make sure there's nothing dragging on the ramp to slow the car down. If there is a problem, the team has two minutes to correct it. Our event supervisor is very experienced and he's a great guy. He wants the kids to be successful and have fun. After they've driven down the ramp, the team carries their car over to the judges table. Students are the only ones allowed to touch their egg and their car. The students remove the egg from the car. They place it on a paper towel and roll it around to prove there is no bleeding. A gentle shake is acceptable. Even if there's a visible crack in the shell, it's a survivor if there's no detectable leakage. Removing the egg is an important thing for a team to practice. Some teams develop creative strategies to prevent a catastrophic accident. So what I'll do is I'll have another video just quick to review on that too. The option to carry a passenger egg gives teams a way to boost their score, but they will lose points if the passenger is injured. I think we should have both eggs in the tournament because we have a really good design and if we and both eggs survive, then we could get a lot of extra points even if it takes up our entire time. Yeah, but isn't that a little risky? If we take up our entire time just to build this car and our passenger egg dies, then we're going to be losing tons and tons of points. A chart in the rules shows how points are awarded. At the end of the first ramp, this team earned 100 points for the driver egg and then another 50 points for the passenger egg. I don't know. Our egg survived, but it's getting kind of rickety. I th I'm afraid we're going to lose a lot of points. Now, if we can just take out this passenger egg and everything will be all right. Because if this egg breaks, we're going to be losing tons of points. And if we just take out this egg, we might be losing points that we could have that we could have won. But at least it'll keep us from losing a bunch of points. On the 
second ramp, the team added another 150 points for the driver rank. They could have earned an additional 75 points for the passenger rank, but they decided not to listen. If they would have decided to carry a passenger rank and it broke, they would have lost 100 points. I think we should do, I think we should add the passenger rank back in because I saw that we got, it's not as rickety as it is and uh, maybe it'll survive and we would get 100 points if it survives. It's worth a shot because it's pretty good, it's pretty sturdy. Let's give it another try. Well, our team's driver egg was ejected, so they're not able to accumulate any additional points. But if the driver egg had survived, our team would have gotten an additional 200. So here, here is a key factor, right? Is you make want to make sure the egg is in the structure. At any point, if it comes out of the structure, it is called as disqualified. And there's a FAQ that talks about that further in details. So that's pretty much what I wanted to cover. Any questions, anything, you know, feel free, come off mute. Uh, you know, I know there's a small crowd, so it does not matter. <laughs> uh, feel free. All right, can you guys still hear me, Nicole? I am still here. I can hear you, yes. Okay, okay. So any questions from anybody? Yes, now is your chance to actually ask the event supervisor any questions you may have. No question is too small. Yep. And even if it's a repeat, you know, you live with me, so it's better to clarify anything you want. Mm -hmm. Is there anything we should know specifically for this uh, event regarding COVID precautions? So I will go ahead and handle that question. Um, we are ever evolving, actually, and um, I can tell you right now that if our competition were to be tomorrow, we would have the required, um, you know, precautionary measures in place, you know, the social distancing, the sanitizing of, you know, anything that the students would be touching in between um, each group that goes up to run their uh their you know expert vehicle down the ramps um but seeing as our competition is in may um things are ever changing and as we get closer to the event time we will actually be sending out information on how we will handle each event and each station uh, appropriately does that answer your question yeah sounds good thanks okay yep Okay, any other questions? Wow, looks like you got it pretty easy. <laughs> I think so. That's pretty, pretty good. Okay. Uh, All right, I, I do. Um, yep, question. So just in case, because um, I had like about a good five, ten minutes where I was dealing with little ones. <laughs> so I missed. So I know that it was recorded. Um, I just want to make sure this happened to me only once before where I was uh, listening on to something that was supposed to be recorded and then I couldn't access it. So uh, in the event that that does happen to me again, um, how can we get this recording again? It was mainly during the video and the, I mean, the, uh, the paper where you put the rules out and then a little bit of the video in the beginning. So I just want to make sure I'm able to access the video or somehow get that those 10 minutes ish of information. Yes, so the video uh, recording was started and like right in the beginning, so you really didn't miss a whole lot. However, these will be uploaded hopefully by tomorrow and they will actually be uploaded on our YouTube channel and our links will be provided on the homepage of our Macomb SL website. Great, thank you. Yep, no problem. All right, any other questions? OK, I do not see any other uh, questions coming up, so 
I guess this will conclude our session of the car crash expert. So I would like to thank our event supervisor for taking the time today. We do appreciate you. Thank you. And uh, yep, yeah. uh, folks, feel free. Uh, you can always send questions. So have a great day. Yes, thank you. All right. Bye-bye.